Good day everyone! We are from Cavite State University College of Nursing and will be presenting to you how to apply balanced skeletal traction. But first, what is balanced skeletal traction? Attraction is an act of pulling and drawing which is associated with counter traction. Its indications are to reduce deformity, to maintain good alignment, to correct deformity, for immobilization, for support, and last, to reduce pain in muscle spasm. Second is the preparation. Check the doctor's order, the patient's name, extremity of to be placed, the balanced skeletal traction, and the weights of the patient. Second is to prepare patient psychologically. Inform the patient of, of what is to be done, the purpose of the treatment, the expectation from the patient, and the nurse expectation from the patient. Now we will be preparing the bed and the needed equipment for applying the balanced skeletal traction. Prepare the bed and equipment needed. This is the orthopedic bed, the Balkan frame, the fear mattress, the fracture board, the bed elevator, four vertical bars, two horizontal bars, three pulleys, and an overhead trapeze. For the traction equipment, Thomas splint, Pearson's attachment, rest splint, Stainman spin holder, the brown baller splint, slings with clips or pins, foot pedal or foot board, three sash cords, the thigh rope, the traction rope, and the suspension rope. Two weight bags. Traction weight that is 10% of the patient's body weight. And lastly, the suspension weight that is half of the traction weight. For the principles of balanced skeletal traction, patient should be in dorsal recumbent position. There must be counter traction. There must be continuous traction. The line of pull should be in line with the deformity. The first pulley is in line with the inguinal area. The second pulley is in line with the knee. And the third pulley is in line with the first and the second pulley. Avoid friction. There should be no knots near the pulley. Cords should be running along the grooves of the pulley. Weights should be hanging freely. Observe for the wear and tear of the bags and the cords. For the application of balanced skeletal traction, first is to measure the distance from the lateral side of the trochanter to the knee by using one of the cords. Position the Pearson's attachment under Thomas splint according to the above measurement. Screw the Pearson's attachment to the Thomas. Apply the rest splint. Apply the slings following the principles. Start from the middle aspect of the Thomas splint and fasten at the lateral aspect. It is to prevent injury. Apply slings snugly, not too tight, so as not to impede circulation, nor too loose which defeats the purpose of the support. The smooth surface of the slings should be in contact with patient's skin. It is to prevent skin irritation. Provide approximately an inch space between the slings for ventilation. If slings are too long, fun fold it. Number of slings will vary with the size of the patient's leg. Keep the ankle and the popliteal area free from slings, because these are highly vascular areas. The broader and longer slings are for the thigh area, while the narrower and shorter ones are for the leg. Using a slip knot, 
tie one end of the thigh rope at the junction of the middle upright of the thomas plate. It is done before the patient's leg is placed on the thomas plate for privacy. Now you can decide on the three manpower team. Man A inserts the thomas splint and Pearson attachment correctly without moving the leg inappropriately. He is positioned at far end of the foot of the bed on the affected side. Man B provides continuous manual traction and pushes brown baller splint away from the work area. He positions himself in between the first and the third man. Man C supports the leg with palm of hand. He positions himself at the side near the affected leg. Instruct the patient on the following. Hold on the overhead trapeze, flex the unaffected leg and lift the buttocks, and at the count of three, swing the body so that we simultaneously transfer the affected leg on the thomas splint. At the count of three, transfer the affected leg while providing manual traction. Using a slip knot, tie one end of the traction rope at the stainless spin holder. Pass the cord along the groove of the third pulley, then attach the traction weight bag to the other end of the traction rope using any kind of knot. There should be one foot distance from the pulley to the knot or the bottom part of the bag should be at the level of the bed. Consume the rope. Tie the other end of the thigh rope to the lateral aspect of the thomas splint using a slip knot. Using again a slip knot, tie one end of the suspension rope to the middle of the thigh rope. Pass the rope along the groove of the first pulley, then to the suspension weight bag. Temporarily hang the weight bag over the pulley. Then pass the same rope along the groove of the second pulley. down to the other side of the traction rope, then under the rest splint. Tie it over the end of the thomas splint using a clove hitch knot and other clove hitch knot at the end of the Pearson's attachment. Consume the rope. Release the suspension weight and remove the rest splint. Apply foot pedal using a ribbon knot. The shorter cords should be tied at the thomas splint, while the longer cords are tied to the Pearson's attachment, in between the last and the second to the last sling. Check for the efficiency of traction by swinging backward, forward, and sideways. How to remove the traction? Hang the suspension weight bag, apply the rest splint, remove the suspension rope and suspension weight bag, apply manual traction and remove the traction weight bag. Tie the traction rope instead to the rest splint using a single knot, then a clove hitch knot to the thomas splint and another clove hitch knot to the person attachment. 